I'm Alan Kenny, and we're in New York for REIT Week 2017, near REIT's Investor Forum. I'm joined by Michael Hudgens, Managing Director and Global Strategist with EII Capital Management. So, Michael, I know that you've been doing some work on transaction volumes in uh, major real estate markets. Fill us in. What have you found? Um, so this is kind of interesting. I mean, we all love our transaction volume data, right? And we're <laughs> slicing and dicing all the time. But we just did something kind of simple. We, we looked around the world and thought about different markets in the U.S. And, and globally and thought about, you know, there are markets out there that are seeing transaction volumes fall. But are there some markets that maybe are closer to an inflection point, if you will, where, where you know, property values will suffer significant declines or at least come under pressure? And so one way we thought about looking at that beyond just are, is the volume coming down is, is a short-term average, like a monthly average of transaction volume falling below a trend line, a longer-term trend line, okay? So you can chart that out for different markets. And what's very interesting is um, you know, if you look at the national market for office, as an example, in the US, uh, transaction volume is down about 6%, right? Which would suggest that values could be under pressure. But you know, we've heard, I mean, from various sources, that private equity real estate investors, for instance, and investors in general in real estate, are, are looking away from gateway markets, saying values are sort of full there, and moving into some of the secondary markets like Atlanta, Nashville, Seattle, Denver, and looking, looking for value, right? So if you take the overall, the overall national office transaction volume, you do that analysis I just mentioned. The short-term trend is actually right in line with the long-term trend, right? Suggesting there, it's kind of in balance, if you will. So it's fallen, but it's in balance. And that kind of, once again, jives with some of the things we're hearing. Um, let's, but if you take it to the next step, and you go into gateway markets, for instance, where we've heard you know, there's been some pressure on transaction volumes. Even there, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, so it's very interesting. Meaning there's some opportunities potentially in, in certain markets versus, you know, uh, 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 remember last year when people were worried about tech, tech um, valuations uh, for, the, for the unicorns, you know, and, and that jives once again very closely with the, some of the reports we've heard over the last few years from places, you know, brokers talking about their intention surveys where uh, private equity real estate investors have increasingly been moving LA up their list of, of favorite markets. Um, so that once again makes a lot of sense. Just for fun, we're, you know, go overseas Two markets, kind of a pair trade, if you will, London and Madrid. Madrid's a market we like a lot. And what does all that mean for property values, cap rates? So, obviously, in a market where you've, you're at, you know, your, your shorter term transaction volumes are falling and are below trend, you're going to have a harder time believing that the values there uh, have, a, have an upwards trend, right? It's, it's, it's not as sustainable. There's not going to be as much uh, transactional or investor support for property values in those markets. Um, and, and one of the things we're, you know, we're also looking at is if you've got two markets, um, they're both you know, falling transaction volumes, those averages are below trend. Then you're also looking at NOI, you're looking at job growth. And what is a little worrisome about the US particularly is that while you, you've seen a, a, mix, a mix in the markets in terms of which ones are showing that kind of la declining interest, if you will, versus others, at the same time, you look across the REIT sectors and almost all of them are showing uh, declining year-on-year -year growth rates for NOI. Moreover, we just got the report on jobs and in 2004, 16, this U.S. economy was adding about 190,000 jobs per month. Now we're adding, you know, year to date, 2017, about 160. Tight market, hard to see that accelerating. So we are obviously at a place where you're scrutinizing these markets and thinking about, you know, cap rates moving and values going down. Obviously, as we talked about before, secondary quality is, is hit first. And that's largely the case. There are some exceptions, like you know, apartment and urban markets, where oversupply is, is kind of uh, putting pressure on values. But generally, we won't see, um, we don't think we'll see core, the highest quality property cap rates move yet. But that's something you need to watch very carefully now. So what kind of timing then should we expect there? So that's a good, that's a good, good, good question. Um, so we, I've seen some, you and I've taught this before. If you look at um, a group of open-ended commercial U.S. property funds tracked by NACRI, for instance, Odyssey is, is the name of the, the benchmark they use. Um, you know, they, those funds do not show significant property value declines unless there's a recession. Um, and so I think about then where is, when's this recession going to happen? And in fact, you know, we've taught, we've talked about this before. So my compatriots in the industry are, are, you know, they've, they've said that there aren't a lot of stresses in the U.S. property market in terms of the usage of debt, for instance. Um, and, and so 
given that, uh, you don't expect a plunge really until every session. Some of the work I've seen by economists, which is interesting, uh, I think the most interesting I've seen is uh, something done by Cornerstone uh, Macro where they looked at corporate profits for the entire U.S. corporate set, not just for S&P 500, which have done just real well, done well just recently, but the entire um, group of companies within the U.S., including smaller businesses. And what you're seeing there is that corporate profits are declining, and if you go back over time and look at you know, numerous cycles and average it, um, we're about 80% through, given where we are now with corporate profits, which are declining, which suggests, per their analysis, about another two years. So that puts us in the middle of what, 2019? That makes a lot of sense. So you know, what does that mean then for the property cycle? Well, the best days are behind it. I think we all know that. Um, if you recall in 1987 and 1989, very different market and there was a lot, there was a lot of stress back then in terms of debt, debt usage as an example um, and, and supply as well. But what was interesting is that between 87 and 89, that same subset of open-ended funds I talked about showed really no gains in, in value uh, appreciation. They delivered a nice yield. So you're still getting total returns that were positive, but the value gains themselves are very spotty. Um, and I think that could be the case for a property in the U.S. for the remainder of this cycle, how long it may last, two years, kind of limp in, lower returns in terms of, um, uh, once again, uh, uh, the combination of, of, of yield plus value. Uh, and then when we hit the next recession, we would finally have a more significant move in values downwards. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Alan. And for more on this and other real estate news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.